Hello everyone, my name is Gustavo Schultz Gattino. I'm an assistant professor at Aalborg University and member of the International Music Therapy Assessment Consortium. Today's presentation I will discuss on cultural sensitivity in music therapy assessment. I organized my presentation in these topics. Cultural sensitivity, multicultural considerations in music therapy, culture sensitivity assessment and music therapy together, translation and multicultural adaptation of assessment tools in music therapy, so one practical example of cultural sensitivity in music therapy assessment, and my final considerations. Starting, cultural sensitivity is employing one's knowledge, consideration, understanding, respect, and tailoring after realizing awareness of self and others and encountering a diverse group or individual. Cultural sensitivity results in effective communications, effective interventions, and satisfaction. So here we can see much better this model made by Feronda when we have the antecedents and the attributes that they are relating each other and in the middle we have the cultural sensitivity which results in effective communication, effective intervention and satisfaction. So this model was organized in the nursing field. However, I believe that this definition and explanation about cultural sensitivity fits really well in the music therapy discipline. Another important topic related with the cultural sensitivity is the multiculturalism in music therapy. Our society has become more diverse in the past decade, as evidenced by the influx of immigrants multiracial and minority groups and the increasing age gap between generations. So according to this specific fact, it's possible to define multicultural or cross-cultural term referring to multiple cultures and indicates contrasting identities interacting or relating to one another in some way. This can include the identities of an individual or the identities of many people. Looking through this idea of multiculturalism, there is the idea of culture considering implicit and explicit meanings. So certain behaviors in culture, such as specific traditions and customs, are observable and explicit. In contrast, expectations or high norms and more implicit meanings, making a group culture nuance subtle. And culture can also be classified on two levels, internal or external. Internal culture relates to a person variable, for instance, one's values, knowledge or religion. And External culture relates to political and organization aspects in a social and ecological context, including economic status and climate. So after this short definition of multiculturalism in music therapy, it's possible to understand this view in the discussion of culture sensitivity assessment and music therapy together. So music therapy is diverse around the world and the assessment procedures, tools, reflect this diversity based on the cultural differences. Music genres, songs, dances, music instruments used in music therapy assessment may be different not only comparing different countries, but even in the same country there are important differences which need to be considered. For instance, the song New York, New York could be really important for somebody from New York, but probably it could be different 
from a person who was born in Dallas, for instance. I would all assessment procedures, tools, in music therapy need a level of standardization. The cultural sensitivity must be respect in order to promote an adequate intervention. The use of international assessment tools, for example, is important to, to the standardize the clinical practice in music therapy. However, these tools have to be adapted to the different cultural settings where they will be applied. For instance, in countries like Argentina and Colombia, music is really associated with dances. So if I have in my assessment tool only listening activities or activities when people will only play, probably I will have some bias when I apply this specific tool in these countries, for example. Another topic really important when we consider culture sensitivity assessment and music therapy is language. Language is a key issue regarding cultural sensitivity in music therapy assessment. In music therapy, most assessment tools and instruments are developed in English. However, even when the participant's primary language is English, they might interpret the questionnaire differently from the author's original intention if their culture is different from the one in which it was created. But I can say this not only in English, but even when we have another language, like Portuguese for example, it's really hard to see that even in one word we can have the same meaning. For instance, here I have the word chateado. So, this word in the Brazilian Portuguese means sad. So, I'm sad with you or I'm sad with something. So, when I have the word chateado in the European Portuguese, it means I'm irritated with you or I'm irritated with something. So, as we can see here, both words could be related, but they have different meanings. So, I can say with this example that it's really hard when we are translating a tool to find out the best meaning to put in one assessment tool because we need to consider this specific cultural difference related with the words. One of, of the most practical examples where the music therapist needs to manage the cultural sensitivity in music therapy assessment is the translation of assessment tools. So I, I gave you some, some examples previously, but here we have specifically the, the discussion about the translation of assessment tools. In accordance with the globalization of the music therapy practice, there is a necessity to translate assessment tools to use in different countries, respecting the multicultural diversity of each place. So if a clinician uses an assessment tool in music therapy with based on an informal translation, there is no guarantee of semantic equivalence and preservation of the item's meanings. So in 2017, Reader, McDermott and Norville published the standards of translation and multicultural adaptation of assessment tools in music therapy inspired by the publication of WIRE in 2005. So it's possible to say that the translation process is organized on 10 steps. So the first step to translate a tool is to prepare this translation. So in this part, the researcher will recruit the members so research assistants, translators, and other members to help in this process. For instance, experts in the area that the tool uh, is specifically is translated, so it's important to have the full team. And in this part of preparation, it's important to ask the permission for the author or for the authors of this assessment tool. 
So the second part is the translation. So the original instrument will be translated in two independent translations. Afterwards, the team, specifically the, the main researcher, will take these two translations and he or she will transform only in one translation. So the main researcher will observe the differences of these two translations and he or she will adapt in one translation. So then the next step is take this translation, this, this last translation. So when, when you finish the, the reconciliation, so you need to take this reconciliated version and translate again to the original language. So we call back translation. So it's necessary to translate to the original language. Then it's important to review if this back translation is similar to the original instrument. It's important to observe the terms, the meanings, mainly if the terms are representing the same meaning. So it's really important this part. Afterwards, the research team will perform the harmonization. So all versions, the two independent translations, the reconciliated version, the back translation version, the original version, they will be compared just to observe if the process during this uh, research was really well or if necessary to back in one of the different parts. So in other words, this part, it's a sort of review of the previous steps to see and guarantee if the, that the process is going really well or not. So if something needs to be changed, it's necessary to back in one of the previous steps. So the next step, the seven, is the cognitive debriefing. So in this part, the tool will be sent to experts who will observe the semantic equivalence, they will observe the clarity, they will observe the relevance of the different terms, and they will suggest if it's necessary or not to change something in the scale. So just to, to highlight that the version that they will observe will be the version that the researchers or the research team have defined after the harmonization. Because normally when we have the harmonization, you can correct something in the reconciliated version. So in this part, I can say that the, the experts in the step seven, they will observe the scale or the, the inventory or the questionnaire looking specifically the relevance, the clarity, and they will see the semantic equivalence in this last version after the harmonization. So the step eight is to review the cognitive debriefing. So to look if there is something that we need to consider looking to the results from the experts. So if it's necessary to make more corrections in the final version of the scale. So in this part, the team will observe all the comments and suggestions and the team will elaborate the final version of the scale. The next step is the proofreading just to see if, if everything is there. So spe specifically in this step nine, it's necessary to see if there is something small to correct or a word or something that is necessary to correct. And in the step nine, we have the final version. And in the last step, in the step 10, the research team will elaborate the final report and they will publish the final version. So normally when the researchers, they, they complete this process, they, they organize this process in an article and they submit to a publication. So these are the 10 steps that normally 
are used when somebody is translating one assessment tool in music therapy. So here I have my final considerations. So the theme of culture sensitivity in music therapy has been increasingly frequent in the publications of recent years. In the area of assessment in music therapy, this is not different, since this the theme allows the development of a better clinical practice and research in the music therapy discipline. So I only need to say now, thank you so much for your attention and here I have my contact, okay? So thank you so much and goodbye.